Well, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to our conjunction video of the week. And this week we're going to be covering our conjunction of sun and moon in the seventh house. And what happens when sun and moon are conjunct in the seventh house, which as you know, is a house of marriage, partnership, relationships. Okay. It's the house of opponents. It's the house of people away in right in front of you, standing in front of you. Okay. Um, it could be just strangers in the world. So anyway, uh, if you do not know, if you have this conjunction and what sign it's in, what nakshatra it's in, all your other astrological details for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my books, consultations, and link to my academy under the shop section at this link. So, <clears throat> sun and moon in the seventh house. So, as you know, the very first thing when we try to understand sun and moon, which are two illuminaries, is... Is the moon ahead of the sun or backwards? Meaning, is it waxing or is it waning? See, when the moon is coming towards the sun, it's waning. When it has crossed, now it's getting the light of the sun. Before it's not, it's behind it. Because waning moon is more self-reflective. It wants more, uh, you know, things for itself, for retainment and for enjoyment where the waxing moon is like i'm receiving enough light let me just go out and give light to the world first so these are the two subtle differences waning moon looks for itself first waxing moon looks out first and then it reaches inwards but when it comes to the seventh house matter okay seven seventh house um if you have just moon by itself, I mean, moon usually does very well by itself. But when it's in a position with this sun, you know, there's definitely going to be ups and downs in dealing with marriage. Because a person will feel confused. Okay, so first of all, if the moon is waxing with this particular conjunction, a person is going to be very selfish in marriage. They're going to look out for themselves first because they think the other person is taking more for themselves. Because that's how the waning moon always thinks. It cannot think any other way. If it's a waxing moon, they'll have a much easier time in marriage because they'll be like, okay, so what do you need? Do you have a problem with me? Okay, how can I, what do I need to change or what mistake did I make? Tell me. A waning moon, if you tell them what there's, you know, there's friction in the marriage, then they'll be like, well, guess what? That's because of the fact you are this way, you are this way, you're this way. And you did this to me, you did that to me. So waning moon will be like, hey, I'm putting a shield up here. Okay, this is my shield. And I'm telling you why I created this shield. Because they're looking for more emotional support, nourishment. A waning moon always wants emotional nourishment. Whether it's their fault or the other person's fault. And even if the other person's at fault and the other person nourishes them, they'll ag ag agree to their own fault. But a waxing moon still will have a problem, but they'll be like, okay, let's resolve this. What's going on? You know, what, what mistake did I make? And that's where things can get resolved better. Um, usually, whenever such people do business, they are better off doing it by themselves instead of a partnership they, because they will have a lot of di it's like it's they're meant to have disagreements i have come across a few cases actually of people who were either doing business or even when they were their spouse doing business with the spouse i mean they were getting in huge fights to a point of divorce and they're like i've yet to end the business just to save the marriage and one of the things you always have to see, obviously, is which planet is getting more strength by the sign. Is it moon that gets more strength? Because then the person will be more uh, introspective. They'll be much more reflective of the mistakes and what needs to be taken care of. So let's say if this conjunction happens in the sign of, you know, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, you know, uh, Libra. The, the, then you will see that moon kind of finds its strength. If this is happening in a hot sign like Aries, 
dry sign like Gemini and Leo and, you know, Sagittarius, Scorpio, boy, sun, sun is more active. Sun is more profound. Sun feels more con control in that situation. That's when the ego comes about instead of reflection. So the sign battle becomes more important, more than even I would say nakshatra sign becomes uh, quite important. Um, and that's actually, you can find that sometimes in the reading where forget even the sign or the zodiac, the planet itself is the most dominating factor in their person's life. But, you know, this is, um, this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle with sun and moon. And especially in the seventh house, you know, they keep getting the dark and light of life through other people. Okay. So anyway, this is my analysis of sun and moon in the seventh house. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you don't know where your sun and moon are placed and all the other astrological details for that, check out the links here. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. And yes, I'm back.